Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You know, church, I wanted to say, I wanted to say sorry to all of us dahil we have extended long. Um, this was not planned. But then again, I contemplated and say that the word of the Lord um, says that we offer that seventh day for Him. Amen. Did not say that offer that two hours in a Sunday morning. Did not say that offer that three hours in a Sunday. Amen. So, um, uh, in as much as we have extended, um, uh, I know and I do believe by faith that this is the will of the Lord. This is the work of the Lord. Amen. Um, I was contemplating actually that, Lord, um, can we have the message next week? But I believe that the Lord equipped this message for us today. And especially probably to, I don't know, there are people probably that are here today and that will not be here next week. So I know and I do believe that the message is fitting for today. And I said that, Lord, can we just have the message next week? And I, the Lord just reminded me my life way back in, uh, when I was in Israel that when the Lord sent me to minister to Beersheba in Ashkelon, I traveled three hours just one way. Amen. I remember those people in the mountains of Kalinga that walked six hours one way just to go for a fellowship in the mountain, in the heat, or in the rain. So my dear brothers and sisters, let's continue to enjoy the comfort that the Lord has given us in this place and let's continue to put the Lord in the center and in the middle of what we are doing today. Amen. And I pray that the Lord will give you that sharpness, that quickness. I pray that the Lord will give you that presence of mind, that attention span. Although science says the attention span of a human is two hours. Well, they said men usually have shorter, shorter span, but I know and I do believe that the Lord can give us longer than that. Amen? So let us pray. Father, thank you so much. Lord, this is an act of faith, Father, trusting in you that although uh, all the odds, Father God, but we, we, we still, Father, desire, Father, to continue and stick to your words, Father God. And Lord, the, the prayer that I have, O oh God, is, uh, Father God, I pray that these words that you have prepared through your servant, Father, I pray that it will minister upon the life of each and every one. I know, Lord, that, that encounter, that unplanned encounter, that experience, that you have given us, O oh God, earlier on is just to set up, Father God, of the word that you want us to hear from you today. So, Father, I pray that you speak forth, Father, through your servant. Father, cover me. Cover me, Father God. Cover me, O oh Lord God. That, Lord, everything is about you. Everything is about this word, O oh God, that you are going to speak forth through this mouth, through this mouthpiece, through this servant, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our message today, my dear brothers and sisters, is taking God seriously. So now, I want to challenge you straight away to the point that are we taking God seriously? Siniseryoso po ba natin ang Panginoon? Again, my dear brothers and sisters, no? Let's consider this the word of God. I don't know your predicament. I don't know your status. I don't know your standing. I don't know your situation with the Lord. But katulad nung sabi ni Sister Alma kanina, na we just go by the song, we just go by the motion, but our heart. So my dear brothers and sisters, I want you to ask yourself, tanungin po natin yung ating sarili, tanungin po natin yung ating isip, what is the reason, what is the purpose that I am sitting here today? Does that mean that I am taking God seriously? My dear brothers and sisters, to the students, and we all have been students as well, what happened to us when we were studying and we do not take our study seriously? We do not turn up to our classes. We do not revise. We do not review. We do not listen and we do not do what the teacher do. 
What happens to us, my dear brothers and sisters? We fail. Amen? We fail. And to students who encounter experience of failure, di po ba? especially when your friends are moving up and you are being left behind, but it's awful experience. Amen? Awful experience na mabagsak po sa ating klase. How about mga empleyado, employees? At work, we have roles and responsibilities. We have job descriptions. But if we are not taking our job description seriously, it is the part of that it, it's the part of that contract that your employer has the right has the power to fire you. Amen. Amen church. Now, holiday season, especially after the COVID pandemic, you, we all, I think a lot of people are praying to go home. What happened if you found that cheap ticket and you approach the seller, you approach the company, you uplo- approach the booking agent, but then you fail to, to give down payment, you fail to answer to their call and to their email in text, what does that make you? You are not serious for the ticket. And if you are not serious about the ticket, the ticket will not be sold to you. Amen, church? Amen? Are we in agreement? Amen po. I suppose that we are believers, being said that we are in the house of the Lord. Amen? Are we all believers? John Reis, he received the Lord last Friday. So, are we all believers? Do we have that faith? Amen, church? As a believer, are we taking that faith seriously? We just said, Amen. Yeah? So as a believer, as a Christian, are we taking our faith seriously? Are we taking God seriously? Are we taking the Word of God seriously na naririnig natin, nababasa natin, na meditate natin? By the way, who is the Word of God? John 1.14, the Word of God became flesh. And He made His dwelling among us. And that is no other than Jesus. So, are we taking Jesus Christ seriously, mga kapatid? Christians are called followers of Jesus Christ. Are we taking Jesus Christ seriously? Sabi nga ni Brother Ramon kanina, we are in the time and season again where our message, our we are crying, we are desiring, we are praying for revival. And thank you, Lord, because the Lord is allowing us a glimpse. The Lord is allowing us a breakthrough, my dear brothers and sisters. With this experience, with that experience, that could only mean one thing. That is a breakthrough for revival. That is a glimpse of revival. That is not revival. Revival is, mga kapatid, after standing up, we now ought to walk in a manner that pleases the Lord. Amen. In a manner that repentance turning 180 degrees. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. And I pray that this message that the Lord gave us to face today will become, especially after that encounter, will become a foundational to our growth, will become a foundation to our faith. And for us corporately, will become a foundation to the revival that we have been praying and desiring. On one condition. What is that condition, my dear brothers and sisters? Anyone knows? This time taking it seriously. We probably did not take it seriously in the past, but this time we need to take it seriously. Amen, church. And Sister Michelle said, I'm borrowing the declarations here earlier. Sister Michelle says earlier that revival, where does revival starts? Amen? Where does revival begins? Revival begins in us. Revival begins in that fist-sized organ called our heart. Revival begins from within us, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Psalms 51.10, ano yung sabi niya doon? Favorite verse natin. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God. That's where revival begins. When we desire, when we cry, when we ask the Lord that, Lord, I don't have a right heart in you. So, Father, I am crying that create in me a clean heart that give me a new right spirit within me. Amen, church? Revival begins if like the prophet Ezekiel, we begin to cry to the Lord and say that, Lord, take away that heart of stone in me and give me a heart of flesh. Anyone, church? Amen. Are we in that moment, especially after that experience, or again, we just went with the flow? My dear brothers and sisters, we came here as a church, we are gathered here as a church, but whatever actions and decisions that we do, it's a personal actions and decisions. People in front, people who stand here in front, they can only exhort you and encourage you. But the decision still lies in your power, in the freedom that the Lord gave you. Does that not the, lo the Lord loves you so much? Giving you the power in freedom to decide what you want to do? But why don't we use that exercise, that power? To surrender and submit it to the Lord. Who can give Second Corinthians five seventeen to us by heart? Anyone? Who can shout Second Corinthians five seventeen to us by heart? I think Gab can do it. <laughs> Therefore. If anyone is in Christ, are we in Christ, church? Amen? Therefore, the top what? Are we in Christ? Amen. If I only rely to what I hear, it seems that I am not in the church. It seems na tatlo, apat lang yung is in Christ. Tatlo, apat lang yung nag amen eh. Are we in Christ, church? Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. And because we are in Christ, it says in there, we are a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. And as we claim that we are in Christ, when we, became in, when we believe in the Lord, when we became saved, when we became Christian, mga kapatid, we ought to be a new creation. Meaning, totally new po. Totally na bago. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Totally na bago. It's like going to the shop and buying a new clothes. Amen. When you go to the shop and you buy a new clothes and you come with a second-hand clothes, return it. The same thing with the Lord. That we claim that we are in Christ, then we ought to be a new and brand new creation. Amen po. We are totally new. Hindi lamang po an improved version of us na sinabi natin last Friday. Hindi lang po not a better person that we have been before. Mga kapatid, We are a brand new creation. Amen. Our old self, our personality, our behaviors, our description ought to have been crucified. Ought to have been kneeled down when you were kneeling down. Amen, church? That's the purpose that the Lord says earlier on, kneel down. Because that is the only way to show submission and surrender to the Lord. And the Lord wants to kneel down in faith those old selves so that as standing up, rising us up, you are a brand new creation. Amen, church. You know, there is only one big hurdle today. There is a one big hindrance today. 
You know what it is? Our unbelief. If you, after going through that encounter, after kneeling down and pouring out to the Lord, after kneeling down and asking for the Lord's forgiveness, and after rising up, if you remain, if you remain, uh, you are not satisfied, if you remain that you did not feel anything, it's gonna be up to you. That's why it's a spiritual my dear brothers and sisters, now it's about declaration of faith. Now it's now standing for the Lord in claiming it and say that, Lord, thank you because I am a brand new creation. Amen, church? Step out today after the service and begin living that new life in the Lord. Amen, church? Begin living that new life in the Lord. Begin walking in that new life in the Lord. You go home and home will be wandering because a new person is coming home. You go to work tonight, you go to work tomorrow, work will be wandering because a new person is turning up to work. Amen, church? Your family back home will be blessed because it's a new person calling them, Skyping, oh, wala na palang Skype, messenger them. Amen, church? You are a brand new creation. You are a brand new you, mga kapatid. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. It is for freedom that Christ brought you here today. It is not an accident that Christ brought you here today. Because Christ wants to give you deliverance. Christ wants to give you freedom. Amen, church? At the end of the day, after receiving that freedom, and you continue, you continue to persist to live in the life that you have known prior to today, that's between you and the Lord. That is between you and the Lord. Mga kapatid, ang nangyayari ngayon, that's what is happening ngayon. We abuse the love of God, we abuse the abundant supply of God's mercy and grace, and we become a super sinner. We become a super sinner. We abuse the forgiveness of God by making it as a ticket for us to continue to sin. Because God is merciful. God is gracious. And you know, if we do that, we are actually worse than the sinner who did not repent. We are worse than the sinner who did not knew the Lord. We are worse than the sinner who did not knew God. Rather than a Christian, rather than a believer who claim to know God, who claim to, to submit, who claim to ask for forgiveness, but after doing so, continues to sin. Mga kapatid, by doing that, sabi nga natin kanina, we repeatedly crucifying Christ. By doing that, we repeatedly putting Christ in public disgrace. Makikita natin yan sa Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. It is impossible for those who have been enlightened. It is impossible to those who claim to be believers, who claim to be Christians, who have tasted that engagement today who have tasted that encounter and experience in the Holy Spirit today, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and yet they fall away. And yet they continue to live in the life that they knew, my dear brothers and sisters. It would be impossible for them to be brought back to repentance. If it is impossible for you to be brought back to repentance, what is your default? You will not be saved. Sorry, it's not my word. It is what the Bible says. Because by doing that, we continue to crucify Christ. We continue to subject Christ to public disgrace. It is impossible for the one to be brought back to repentance if after receiving Jesus Christ, we continue to sin. But yet, and yet, I pray that this is, Lord, this is our chance. I mean, Sister Alma, we might not be given another chance after today. My dear brothers and sisters, 
take the word of God very seriously. Why don't you say it to the Lord? Lord, I take your word seriously. I take your word seriously. It would be impossible, it says in there, it would be impossible for someone who has encountered, experienced the Lord, and yet fall away again to be brought back to repentance. You know, we had this, this discussion last time, no? Sister Michelle, remember this? Now, this is a very, this is a very deep, this is a very severe word from the Bible. This is a very severe word from the Lord. You know, the Lord is telling you na if you encounter me, if you experience me, and you continue to live your life of sin, it would be impossible for you. Are we taking this seriously, my dear brothers and sisters? Are we taking this seriously? No? This is a steep, this is, a st this is quite a serious and powerful word from the Lord. I don't know about you, but me, Listening to this passage, it definitely catches my attention to stop, to look, and to listen where I am standing with the Lord at the moment. That is the only reply na kailangan nating ibigay dun. This passage wants us to take very seriously and evaluate our situation with the Lord. Our standing with the Lord, mga kapatid. Our personal relationship with the Lord. We are warned against false security that we know. If you are li still living on that false security, it is better to make that security truthful. Di po ba, mga kapatid? Why continue to walk or thread on that thin wire? if you can walk in that firm and stable foundation in the Lord. Amen, church. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. It is very good to look at God as loving Father. It is very good to look at God as this merciful God, this gracious God who has nothing, who has no thoughts for us but His good and His love, that He will never leave us nor forsake us, that all His thought is for our good. But please let us not forget to look at God as that righteous God. That the Lord said that I will make sure that there is penance for everything that you have done. Amen, church. You know ang nang, nang, nangyayari ngayon? Yes, even in the church, we are living in that great compromise. We easily compromise our faith in the Lord. We easily compromise our faith in the Lord. Ikinukompromiso natin palagi yung ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon. There is a great deception of compromise, mga kapatid. Sabi ko nga, even in the church, A lot of churches nowadays, yung ipreach nila mga kapatid is eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Yung preach nila, as long as ibinibigay mo yung tithes mo and offering mo, mas hindi ka pumunta sa church, magtrabaho ka para madagdagan yung tithes and offering mo, secure ka. My dear brothers and sisters, Matthew 24, 24, it says in there, there will be false messiah, there will be false prophet, my dear brothers and sisters, that will target even the church, that will target even the elect. Yes, even you. So my dear brothers and sisters, sabi nga ni Apostle Paul, we need to be engrafted with the word of the Lord. Accept the, Lord, the word of the Lord with joy and thanksgiving in our heart, but let us meditate the word of the Lord. Let us read the word of the Lord. Amen? Will you call yourself a Christian? Now you call yourself one, and yet you do not open your Bible, and yet we do not meditate in the word of the Lord, and yet we do not spend time and moment with the Lord. Are you being serious? 
Are you being serious? No, my dear brothers and sisters, no? So there is a great deception even in the body of Christ. And I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that the only way to be cleared of that deception is by clinging on to the true Messiah, clinging on to the true teaching of the true Messiah. Amen, church? And you can only find that where? In the Word. Amen, church? So I pray that this revival will lead us, will usher us as well with that desire, with that burning desire to buy a Bible if you don't have one. I don't, yeah, it's good to have that Bible application, but it's good to have a Bible if you have one. And begin to desire to read your Bible. You begin to desire and spending moment with the Lord. Amen, church? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 9.27, the latter part, it says in there, lest I myself will be disqualified from the prize. Lest I myself will be disqualified from the prize. Lord, after coming today, after sp spending late on this Sunday, on this church, after kneeling down, masakit na yung aking tuhod, and yet, I am disqualified from the price. Napakasakit. Walang edi dito, kaya Kuya Alan. Napakasakit, Kuya Alan. ba? You came to church, nagpuyat ka, you sacrifice, and yet, you are being disqualified from the price. My dear brothers and sisters, the perfect example of that is those people standing in the presence of the Lord in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the, the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Amen? Not everyone who comes to me and say, Lord, Lord, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven seriously. Only the ones who take the word of the Lord in their heart seriously. Only the one who take God seriously. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name we drive out demons. And in your name we perform miracles. Lord, Lord, we believe in you. Lord, Lord, we called ourselves Christians. Lord, Lord, we went to church on Sundays. Lord, Lord, we were fortunate to be there during that engagement. During that encounter. Lord, we gave our tithes and offering. The word of the Lord says, I will tell them plainly, I will never knew you. Were you there? I did not notice you. Could it be that you were not serious enough? Did you have a faith in me? I did not notice it. Could it be that you are not serious enough? Church, Apostle Paul said, don't let that be me unless I will be disqualified from the price. Who wants to be disqualified from the price in here? Anyone? Anyone? No, let that not be me. Wag sanang ako, Panginoon. I see myself as a believer. And I know that you do too. You see yourself as a believer. You see yourself as a Christian. Amen? Amen, church? Amen. And I agree on that. You are in your very right. But the Lord's question is, are we taking God seriously? Because 
unless we take God seriously, how do the how do Jesus address us? Evil doers. Amen. That's what is written in his word. The Lord calls us evil doers if even if professing as a Christian, but if we do not take the Lord seriously. Supposing we died, and we know that that is a fact, so all of us will die. Supposing that we die and we are standing in front of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is asking us, can you give me one valid reason that I will allow you enter into my heavenly kingdom? What would you say? What would you tell Jesus? Mga kapatid, what do you think would you say, Jesus? Would you be able to say, Jesus, that Jesus, in my life on earth, I have taken you seriously. In my life on earth, I have professed my faith seriously. My dear brothers and sisters, there is no other question then. Wala po tayong ibang sagot na maibibigay sa Panginoon. The only reason that we can give the Lord is how seriously we have taken Him. The reason that we can give the Lord, mga kapatid, is proportional, equal to how we have been seriously taking our relationship with Him. Amen? Are we seriously embracing the way, the truth, and the life that the Father gave? That only that way, the truth, and the life is the only way to get to the Father? John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Are we taking Him seriously, mga kapatid? Many will say on that day that, Lord, Lord, we know you. Lord, Lord, we met with you. But Jesus says, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you who practice lowliness. But in verse 24, Matthew 7, 24, it says in there, this is my plea. Ito po yung pakiusap ko sa lahat. This is the message to all. That everyone who hears this word, everyone who hears this pakiusap, and put them into practice. So dito pala nakikiusap ang Panginoon sa atin to put this into practice. Amen po? Lahat yung narinig natin kanina, Lahat yung shiner natin kanina, lahat yung experience natin kanina, yung pagluhod at pagtayo kanina, that dying in sin and rising up with Christ, mga kapatid, there is only one that is that needs to be done, mga kapatid. That is to put that into practice. Amen? That is to continue, that is to start, to live our new life. Amen po? Anyone who hears this word of mine, the saith Christ, and puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Amen, church? You know, you are wise. You are wise if you put this into practice. Amen po? You are wise if you put this into practice. Everyone who has taken God seriously, everyone who has taken the word of God seriously, Jesus said, everyone who has taken me seriously is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Amen. What does that house signify? Our faith. Anyone who hears this word, and put them into practice is just like a wise man who developed that faith in me, who entered into that relationship with me, Jesus said. Amen. 
Kay Kristo lang natin dapat ituon ang ating pananampalataya. Kay Kristo lang natin dapat ituon ang ating relasyon sa Kanya. Because He is our rock. Amen? Hello, church! Amen? Jesus Christ is our rock. Amen? And here, and Jesus Christ is our rock, church, mga kapatid. Our salvation is only founded in the Lord. Amen? Our foundation is only founded in the Lord. If we take the Lord seriously, if we take Jesus seriously, our salvation is solid. Our salvation is firm. Our salvation will be immovable. Our salvation will be sturdy. Our salvation will be strong. Our salvation will be unbreakable. Irregardless of the challenges that many have shared and testified today, if the Lord is the rock of our foundation, my dear brothers and sisters, no one can sway us away. Amen? I dare to ask these questions to all of us. To worry, I ask myself as well prior to, to this. So I am not exempted. I want to ask this serious question sa ating lahat. And I want us to consider this seriously. Although naririnig natin yung ingay ni Sep Sep, let us not pretend na nagbibingi-bingihan tayo na hindi natin narinig itong portion na to. I want to ask yourself seriously. Do you have eternal life? Do you have eternal life? Are you saved? Would Jesus recognize you if you are standing in front of Him in heaven, mga kapatid? Mga kapatid, there is nowhere to run. It's either you are saved or it's either you are not. Dalawa lamang po yung pagpipilian. You either have eternal life or you do not. You either spend eternity in the glory of God or you spend eternity in suffering in the lakes of fire, mga kapatid. You are either saved or you are not, mga kapatid. Amen? There is no middle ground. There is no standing in one leg in the Lord, in one leg in the world. There is no Christian on a Sunday and be secular during the weekdays. There is no Christian in the church and secular at work. There is no Christian in the church and secular at home. There is no Christian going to the church and secular exiting the church, mga kapatid. You are either saved or not. You are either serious or not. So my dear brothers and sisters, our cry, my prayer, my cry is take the Lord very seriously. Take the word of God very seriously. There is only one reason that we came here today. Why is it that I did not pl plan to come today? Oh, Marlon, I am really blessed. Why is it that I did not plan to come today? But why is it that the Lord led me to this place? My dear brothers and sisters, this is the reason why na I contemplated na uh, wag na lang tayong magkaroon ng message after that lengthy engagement in encounter, my dear brothers and sisters. But I pray that this word that we are hearing today is something the Holy Spirit wants us to hear. This word that we are hearing today is something the Holy Spirit wants us to hear. And I pray that God 
Help us after hearing this message. I pray that God will help us to be people who love Jesus more than anything else. Amen. I pray that after today that we will be people who will love God more than anything else. Romans 5.5 5, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has gi been given to us. Amen. That is the only reason why the Holy Spirit revealed to Brother Lester, sing that song, Come Holy Spirit. Because I don't know what is our upbringing, I don't know what is the level of our faith. Some of you, when we were kneeling down, some of you, when we were crying and praying, automatically they are being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Some people probably needs to be prompted. That's why we sang that song, Come Holy Spirit. And I pray and I do believe in God that as we sang that song, Come Holy Spirit, I need you. That was a declaration of faith and the Holy Spirit came to you. Amen. Amen, church. Who did not receive the Holy Spirit of the Lord here? Wag po tayong mahiya. In the book of Acts, there were believers, they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they did not knew that there was a Holy Spirit. And up until that they knew that there was a Holy Spirit, up until Peter prayed for them that they received the Holy Spirit. Anyone who are yet to receive the Holy Spirit here? Wag po tayong mahiya. Anyone? Anyone who does not receive the Holy Spirit here, wag po tayong mahiya because you know what? That is the most important part of your salvation. Because Romans 5.5 5 says, we can only love God, we can only love Jesus through the Spirit. Amen. Nobody loves Jesus more than the Holy Spirit of God. Nobody loves the Lord more than the Holy Spirit of God. The love that you know towards Jesus, towards God, if you do not have the Holy Spirit of God, I'm telling you, I'm probably keen to disagree that that's probably not. Amen, church. There's no one on earth who loves Jesus more than the Holy Spirit of God. And it is my prayer that the same love which the Holy Spirit loved Jesus would be our love too. Amen? That everything in us would be for Him. Amen, church. When, Jesus, when Joshua is nearing his death, he gathered all the Israelites in Shechem. Brother Ramon re, um, uh, exhorted us earlier of this. And he challenged the people. He told the people to recommit and to rededicate their lives and their faith to the Lord. And once again, church, today, in this place, in this hour, in this church, in this hall, this is our Shechem. Shechem is where we recommit our life to the Lord. Where we recommit our faith in the Lord. Where we recommit our love to the Lord. Joshua 24, 14. Now fear the Lord, it says in there. Joshua said, now fear the Lord. Kailangan katakutan nyo ang Panginoon. You know, up until this point, the people are not fearing the Lord. And my question, same goes back to you. Are you fearing the Lord? Are you fearing the Lord? You only knew that. Because the only mark of fearing the Lord is if you are serious in Him. Because however he said that, Lord, I fear you, but if you are not serious in him, I tell you, you do not fear the Lord. Amen, church. So Joshua is telling us right now, fear the Lord. Katakutan natin ang Panginoon and serve the Lord with all faithfulness. Sir, serve the Lord with all seriousness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors' worship beyond the Euphrates River, beyond Egypt. You know, this ancestors worship, this is our former life.
This is our old life. Egypt represent our sinful life. Egypt represent the world. And that river crossing represents our baptism. Amen, church. So the call today is, itapon na natin. Mapagod na tayo. Matapos na tayong mamuhay sa buhay nating makasalanan dati. Matapos na tayong mabuhay sa buhay natin bago tayo na bautismuhan ng Santo Spirito. Amen, Church? It says, Choose for yourself this day. Now, sabi niya rito, If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, if you cannot serve the Lord with all seriousness, sabi niya doon, din pumili ka. Ito na yung panahon mga kapatid that the Lord is challenging us. You are either for me or you are against me. Up until today, you are walking in the middle ground. Up until today, you are walking in the center. But the Lord said, today you are either for me or you are against me. Because the Lord said, choose for yourself this day whom you are going to serve. Mamili ka. Sa unang pagkakataon, mga kapatid. Kapatid, kapatid. For the first time, magpakatotoo ka sa iyong sarili. For the first time, magpakatotoo ka sa iyong sarili, sabi ng Panginoon. You are either for me wholeheartedly or you are against me. There is no lukewarm, sabi niya sa Revelation, sa Church of Revelation. Walang sala sa init, walang sala sa lamig. Amen. But for me, wow, how grand to declare and I pray and I believe, mga kapatid, that I can make a voice to everyone, for everyone, that as for me, as for my household, as for your people, we will serve the? Anyone, we will serve the? We will serve the? Hallelujah! We will serve the Lord. Can I invite the music team back? Are we ready to serve the Lord? Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we are finishing shortly. We are finishing very soon.